Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are bringing it back from the brink. Spawning in the bottom left-hand position on Olrena, refusing to go down. He was down 2-0, but the comeback starts now. It's Millennium's Deji. Can his opponent wrest momentum away from him on Olrena and seal the deal 3-1? What's at stake is a WCS Circuit Winter Championship ticket. Representing Euronics, it's Firecake. So this is game number four of a best of five. Daishi clawing his way back after going 2-0 down. The belief is back. So similar opening, but of course you can't... Uh, well, if Reapers could jump across this chasm, they'd be overpowered as hell. They can jump up and kill Broodlords, man. And uh, I like the fact that we're using the spawning pool to spread the creep inside the base as well. Firekick feeling a little bit less threatened. There's a lot less cliff to deal with this time on Ulrena. So he's fine to spread his buildings out a little bit more. And accept that he might actually be pressured slightly less early on. There are more choke points. Uh, a little bit easier once you have some army to deny those specific choke points. And as a result... Daishi is going to be going for a reactor first on this barracks. Firecake sees this as well with his overlord, knows that it's going to take some time before marines are popped out, and will see that Daishi has gone for the natural very quickly. I think that might trigger Firecake into going straight for his third. Is that a drone? It's a drone that's being transferred. We'll keep an eye on when that third base goes down as well. So all very, very macro heavy to start things off with. And we have a factory follow-up, so uh, not even going into heavy bio off multiple racks. Not in this initial game. Second gas being taken after the factory goes down now for Daishi. In the meantime, just continuing to macro up. We have the third base going down now for Firekick in the location we predicted. I mean, there isn't really an alternative, so not difficult to predict admittedly, but we all knew he was going to go for it pretty soon as soon as he saw the command center on the low ground here, and he's following that up with a Roach Warren next to the spawning pool inside his mate. Now Roach is, of course, a little bit inefficient, but extremely versatile, very important in the early game, especially uh, against any sort of mech units where you just want to survive long enough to do the damage, so killing off those siege tanks being annoying to Hellions that do bonus damage to Lings, for instance, with the tech lab going down there. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a very heavy drop base play from Daishi. Um, so once you get a decent number of Siege Shanks and Liberators, technically you can hold this position, but going from here out to here is actually quite difficult sometimes, because you can hold this position. The issue is Zerg can hold this position as well. So what you want to do is you want to make... Once you cement this position... You can win the game as Terran quite easily because your siege tanks split the natural in the third base. Uh, so Firecake's objective is to keep Daishi back here and not allow him to do that. So we'll see if that ends up happening later on in this game. It's a very, very, it's a very interesting uh, matchup here due to the map architecture. It's very unique, and uh, we'll see how that fares. At the moment, though. It is going to be Liberators by the looks of things, so uh, potentially liberating these kind of locations to keep Firekick in his base until Daishi is ready to attack. Note that there is no third base incoming just yet. I mean, there's still plenty of time for that to happen, but this could potentially be a two-base attack. Second Barracks is uh, almost complete here, and are we going to see Siege Tanks pop out here for Daishi? Right. Well, there's a Liberator. There's an Overlord. Oh, and there was a Liberator for like a fraction of a second. I honestly don't think that was seen. But he'll definitely see it from here. And well, this gets spotted in time. Firekick should... Oh, Firekick actually staying off the edge there. Waiting to see if he can get some purchase. Unfortunately, the Queen is going to say absolutely not. And the Liberator is going to try and go to the other side. It's on about half health. The... Queen actually doing a good job of stepping outside the Liberator's range there in order to attack it. Liberator nearly dead, manages to kill two workers so far. There's also a Ravager here, and there should be a Queen out on this ledge just waiting to attack the Liberator. So I won't be able to get too much done. Liberator on 45 hit points. That should be that for now. Oh. Well, that gets killed off. 
and he doesn't actually get another work. He nearly gets the queen, though. This queen on very little health, down to under 10 hit points, but successfully killing off that liberator, which is excellent. Daishi following it up with a Viking to clear out overlords. A lot of Terrans now doing that. Uh, it, it, it wasn't a thing before, but the Viking is just so useful at clearing out your opponent's vision and making them constantly second-guess themselves or sack units to scout in the mid-game. Absolutely no issues with it at all. So we'll see what Daishi ends up doing here. Firekick wanting to be a bit more mobile, opening up the middle of the map, but while he is doing that, another drop is going down inside the main base, being very drop heavy. Still only the two workers killed this game, so not able to get too much damage done. But uh, drops are going to be more difficult to deal with because uh, basically overlords have been cleared out from this middle bit of the map thanks to the Viking. So because that's happened, uh, it means that it's a lot harder for Fire Kick to see the drops coming in. And this is what I was talking about. Once Daishi gets into the open, that's great. But Fire Kick has to prevent him from getting there in the first place. So he's trying to push Daishi back across this narrow bridge and will successfully do so. This is the Gandalf Bridge, ladies and gentlemen. You absolutely do not want to pass here. You also probably can't. And, uh, well, Daishi successfully pushes, uh, or rather... Uh, Fire Kick successfully pushes away Daishi there, and he also has a counterattack going in to the natural expansion. And that is doing an awful lot more damage. A good number of workers have been killed, 19 in total this game, and that's actually brought the worker supply down to 34 from Daishi's point of view. So Fire Kick, while all that was going on, remember those lings that were breaking down those rocks? Yeah, they were doing a counterattack while the all-important defense here was pushing Daishi back across here. And all of a sudden, Fire Kick is looking very hunky-dory indeed. He is up to 110 supply versus 62. There are queens coming in with this attack as well. We're going to spread creep and try and get them in on the action. And this could end up being very difficult. 24 more lings are on the way for Fire Kick. Now he wants to close things out against Daishi very, very quickly indeed. Needs to be careful that he doesn't get the queens too far in. The siege tank is doing a good amount of uh, work here and it's on 13 kills. There's another drop from Daishi moving into the natural expansion where the lair is. Will successfully get some damage done against the drones, but the links coming in from behind should stop that. 19 versus 6. Here comes the attack from Fire Cake. Is this going to do game ending damage? Here come the Ravagers, and there go the Siege Tanks. Very good pickups there by the Medivac. A single Medivac able to move both Siege Tanks, but the Queens are now moving in. The uh, SCVs are doing their best to uh, hold this off as long as they can, but look at this damage being done. This medevac is now empty. There are no more Marines in this attack, so it is just Ravagers and Queens moving into the natural expansion of Daishi. 109 plays, 61 supply, and Fire Cake at the moment is looking like he is on the cusp of getting himself a ticket to the 2016 WCS Winter Championship. He wants that ticket to Katowice so the Queens don't have access up the ramp yet, but as soon as they do, these Ravagers are going to be able to see everything that's going on. They're sacrificing themselves using those transfusers to spot those opportunities. One of the Siege Tanks is being forced to pick up, but now the Queens are getting in on the action as well. More Roaches coming up the ramp. This is a huge choke point for Daishi. He needs to push the Zerg back now. He successfully does it. Fire Kick has to move back. He's on 102 supply versus 64. Look at how many STVs are just kind of chilling there, hoping they don't die. More Ravagers being produced though, and the third base has been lifted as well. So Fire Cake now, he's got a fourth base behind this, more and more units streaming in, and uh, great micro I have to say in the medevacs from Daishi, but the sheer volume of units here is just making this so difficult. The siege tanks managed to make their way up onto the high ground, but a bunch of SCVs on the low ground will not be so lucky. This orbital command is on the verge of going down here. Oh, and so close to dying as well. The SCVs behind it will go down though. 44 plays, 26 workers, and there is no drop counterattack coming in from Daishi. He is spending all of his resources just defending, 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 and staying alive right now. And I think he will be able to do it, but at the cost of his army and mining for the next couple of minutes at least, and I don't know if he's going to be able to... Uh, oh, never mind. Once that siege tank is gone, I mean, these Stim Marines can do a lot of damage, but there are a lot of Ravagers here. I am less convinced right now, and I actually think Fire Cake might be looking to just push in. It's 90 plays, 39 supply, 44 versus 22 drones, 34 Ling streaming in, and that's really all you have to know right now. Fire Cake wants to end this right here, right now. These Marines are doing an excellent job, but once these Speedlings get in here as well, Fire Cake 
is basically going to have Daishi by the throat. He sees the lings. He gives the GG and Euronics Fire Cake gets his ticket to Katowice. He is going to be moving on into the WCS Circuit Winter Championship. Congratulations to Fire Cake.